So just take up the usual standing posture, the feet shoulder width apart, perhaps even a little bit wider than shoulder width. Body is nice and upright. Tailbone sits down a little bit. Top of the head gently pushes up a little bit. So we feel this elongation of the spine as the tailbone draws down and the top of the head gently pushes up. Draw the chin slightly back towards the spine. Move the tailbone just a little bit towards the front. And then we can focus our minds deep in the belly. So we're going to make our opening exercise from deep in the belly. We just turn very gently and feel into the back. See how it feels. And go to the other side and do the same as well. So it's just a process of gently waking up the back and assessing how it feels. And then we can release that and just begin the gentle turning exercise. So for uh, those who are less able to stand, this exercise can be done sitting down. And if you find even that a problem, uh, then you can just skip 15 minutes ahead to the healing part of the program. But if you can manage the warm up exercises, they're very beneficial just to get the chi flowing through the body. So this little tap that the forearms make onto your belly, this little tap that your wrists make onto the small of the back, it's just like beating a drum. You're creating a small vibration that goes through the small of the back, through the kidneys, through the spleen, through the liver, through the belly. And <laughs> I was reading something, a quote by Nikola Tesla, which I can't do any justice to, but it basically said something along the lines, if you wish to know the secrets of the entire universe, look at vibration, energy, and vibration, something like that. I think that's it. It's about vibration. We find that everything in our universe vibrates at a very, you know, tiny, 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 tiny rate that we can't even see. We find that um, when we watch a, a film, uh, 25 frames every second is enough to con us into believing that that's, that's something that's uh, sort of almost like reality. It seems seamless, doesn't it? 25 pictures spun in front of your eyes and in, the, in a second. And that's enough for it to seem like reality for us. And so the flickering of the entire universe is at a much, much finer, faster rate than we could ever understand. But uh, yeah, so everything is a vibration. Everything is... Uh, responding in your body to this gentle tap. So as you tap, just like beating a drum, it sends a vibration deep through your body. Every cell starts to vibrate. Cells can very easily um, get sort of stuck together, get into little clumps of cells. And so when we're thinking about that, there was a... Um, an image that I saw many years ago, which I often refer to, and I wish that I'd actually clipped it out and kept it, but it was a, a guru, and they'd taken, they'd attached a special camera that was actually inside one of his veins, and they took a photograph of all the little red blood cells flowing through the vein, veins, and uh, there were little sort of clumps of them going by, like sort of, you know, watching a stream or something, I suppose. And then uh, they said to him, could you chant Om 40 times? And so he chanted Om. And then they took another photograph of his blood. And every single one of the single blood cells had kind of separated. And they were just flowing completely freely. And so it looked, you know, it was, it's one of those things that when you look at the photograph side by side, you'd instantly choose the second photograph because it just looked better. And so that was the case. It, you know, the, his blood's had changed its actual um, consistency just by using his voice. Okay, so there's no sort of magic behind that. Well, I suppose there really is, but you know, there's 
the science behind it is the fact that when he sets up the vibration in his chest, uh, of course, in his lungs, he's changing the sort of vibration of everything inside his body. And so there's the arms, you know, sort of hums through his body. Everything gently vibrates. And that was just shaking the blood cells uh, to a sort of a deep degree. And the blood cells were separating out. And so, yeah, that was just a kind of like a, a very visual effect of what a vibration in the body might actually do to the physiology of your body. And so here we are, thumping gently onto the body, and this vibration is sent through. So there's another story as well that slightly hangs off the side of this. It's like um, about lymph in the body. So lymph, uh, let's say blood, blood flows through the body very easily because it has lots of channels to flow along, and it has a heart to pump it round. Lymph, which is the kind of the waste disposal system of the body, doesn't have the benefit of this, uh, you know, lovely heart to pump. The lymph system, the only thing that moves the lymph is the diaphragm. Um, and so, well, any kind of muscular contraction really in the movement is what moves the lymph. So people who lead a sedentary life don't move their lymph very quickly. And that means that you're not expelling toxins from your body very well. And that's why um, uh, Scandinavian people often talk about, um, oh God, damn, the, the term has just escaped me. It's basically sort of brushing the skin. And so they often use brushes or, or hand, um, you know, sort of things like loofers to move the blood and to move the lymph toward the heart so you brush up your legs and you brush up your arms and you brush up your sort of belly, I think. And, you know, you're sort of bringing everything, you're moving it manually. It's like a lymphatic drainage massage. People have that as well. And so the key to this is diaphragm. And how do we move diaphragm? That's breathing. And how do we get our breathing going? Well, that's walking, that's gentle, you know, exercise. That's getting, uh, or, you know, people talk about bouncing on a, a trampoline one of those little mini bouncing things. It's about getting the lymph going. And so we have to gently move the lymph and Qigong helps us to move the lymph as well. So each of our sort of bends and stretches moves and expands and changes the shape of the diaphragm. And so even this exercise here, we're gently twisting the diaphragm from side to side. Let's just move into the second phase of this exercise. We'll slow down a little bit and then we'll just make the exercise longer. But also, there's the gentle vibration that's set up by tapping, tapping onto the body. And very often there are various different Chinese styles that have you tapping along the length of your arm, tapping along the length of your leg. And it's all sort of in the category of self-massage, really. And so there's a kind of like a, um, a correlation, I suppose, let's say, between tapping onto the body massaging onto the body uh, yeah they're the same they have the same nature if you like so here we're tapping onto our vital organs getting the chi going we're twisting our body which is squeezing the diaphragm in a few moments we'll do forward and backward bends which stretch and opens the diaphragm as well so all of this is about internal physiology as well as just getting the chi the energetic energy flowing around the body. Okay, so and just out of interest, you can also change this exercise a little bit. You can actually strike the outside of your arms if you want as well. And so if you lift the hands up, you're still gently striking one hand on the small of the back. But you can also gently strike the outside of your arms, which also uh, you feel that on your chest as well. So you can just decide which version of this you prefer best. If you'd like to do the arms, if you'd just like to go back to doing the sides, whatever works for you. You can do a little bit of each. Do a few of the lower ones. 
and then go and do a few of the upper ones. And move back to a few of the lower ones, just to keep things interesting. Okay, good. Well, I think we've done enough tapping anyway. Let ourselves gently slow down, slow down, slow down. <sighs> okay, so hands in the earth, lift up chi. Gently pour chi down through the body. Move the energy deep inside. Okay, gathering, lifting, and pouring. So if three is enough, that's great. And we can go on to our forward bends. If you want to keep going with pulling down, you can do it 10 times, 20 times, and then join in with the other exercises. Otherwise, we can just gently drift our hands up above our heads, stretch up, and then drift head and arms over. Rolling into the upper back, rolling into the middle back, and gently into the lower back. When we get down to this lower posture, can you just see if you can relax your neck totally? Just allow the neck to hang and relax. Keep the body soft and easy. Great. So let's just stretch gently towards the tips of our toes. And then release. Imagine a line that's been drawn between the roots of our toes. Gently stretch towards that and release. Imagine a line that's drawn between our insteps. Gently stretch towards that and release. Imagine a line drawn between our heels. Gently back towards that and release and relax and the body just gently hangs. Tailbone lifts up behind, tailbone pushes to the front of the body, spine starts to roll up and then the arms and ears try and come up as one piece. Stretch up into the blue sky. Knees and hips drift forward. You can gently lean back. Stretch up. Gently back. Stretch up. And gently back. Up. And back. Okay, let's do some side bends. Let the left hand curl down, open up the right side of the body. Right hand curls down, gently opening up on the left. Down on the left. And down on the right. Good. Draw both hands up into the blue sky. Okay, let's begin again. Arms and ears at the same time, just working over the nape of the neck, arching into the upper back, arching into the middle back, arching into the lower back, sinking and relaxing. Okay, so we gently extend down towards our toes. Release. In line with the roots of our toes. Release. Head towards the insteps. Release. Work back towards the heels. Relax and release. Body hangs. Tailbone lifts up behind, 
Elbow and pushes the front, spine rolls up, arms and ears come up at the same pace, stretching up into the blue sky. Knees and hips drift forward as you gently lean back. Up and back. Gently back. Up. And back. Up. Gently back. Stretch up into the blue sky. Left hand curls down. Stretching towards the back of the left knee. Right side of the body open. Right hand curls down, stretching towards the back of the right knee. Down on the left. And down on the right. Good. Stretch hands up. Okay, good. Last time through the process. Oh, sorry, no, straight legs this time. We've got two more to do. Okay, so lock the legs straight. Tip over the head, the arms, the ears. Try and keep the legs as straight as you can as you go down. Just benefits the hamstrings. Just let the body hang here for a moment. So nice and easy hanging. Just take it, relax the back of the neck. Legs stay straight. Just try and shift the weight a little bit forward into the toes. Just get an extra little extension in the hamstrings. Okay, great. So extending down towards the toes. And release. In line with the roots of our toes. And release. Working towards our insteps. Release. Head back towards the heels. Deep bend. Release and relax, body hangs. Tailbone gently lifts up behind. Tailbone pushes to the front, spine rolls up. Arms and ears gently roll up. Up, 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 up into the blue sky. Knees and hips drift forward and you can lean back. Up and gently back. Up and back. Up and back. Hands up into the blue sky. Okay, so let's drift down the left hand side. Open on the right. Down on the right hand side. Open on the left. Down on the left. Feel the whole right side of the body gently opening up. Down on the right. Good. Hands into the blue sky last time through. Again, the straight legs if we can. Stretching up. Arms and ears only. Legs stay straight. And then upper back, middle back, lower back, lower down, sink and relax. Tuck the tummy, let the body hang. Great, so first extension takes us down towards the toes. And release. In line with the roots of our toes. And release. In line with the insteps. Release. In line with the heels. Release, relax, body hangs. Lift the tailbone up behind, push the tailbone to the front, roll the spine up, arms and ears coordinated. Bring them up as one piece and stretch up to the blue sky. 
gently drifting the knees and hips forward as you lean back. Up and gently back. Up, gently back. Up and back. Great. Hands up into the blue sky. Let's let the left hand curl down. Feel the right side of the body opening as you reach over. The right hand kind of reaches all the way across into the right side, to the left side. Head okay, down with the right hand then. Left hand arcs over your head, points off to the right. Feel the whole left side of the body open. Down on the left. And down on the right. And so each one of these movements requires your diaphragm to change its position, to change the sort of, well, to squeeze inside. And that's what moves lymph around the body. And let's stretch up into the blue sky. And then just release the hands. Now, Dr. Pang doesn't uh, have any breathing attached to these exercises. But instinctually, you'll probably be breathing in as you lift up. And if you're breathing out, it doesn't matter, but you don't even notice your breathing. It's not important to notice your breathing. What tends to happen is that your breathing falls into its own kind of natural rhythm. And so as you do these exercises, your breath you know, you take a nice long breath to move with a slow movement and you breathe out nice and gently. Don't focus on it, but it's what happens anyway. So you just, just allow your body to do that naturally. The point about that is that with every single one of these nice breaths that you're taking, you're also making the lymph move in the body, making the blood move. Let's just gather one more time and bring the hands back to the belly. And so I'm sure if you've ever done any kind of uh, yoga or anything like that, you've probably come across belly breathing techniques. And the simple sort of thing to do to get your lymph moving is just to, with your hands on your belly, you can just take a big breath in through your nose and push your tummy forward. Inflating it like a balloon. And as you breathe out through your nose, just squeeze with your hands. all the breath goes out. So it couldn't be more easy than that. Breathe in, push the hands forward. Breathe out, squeeze the air out. One more. Squeeze. And then just breathe naturally. So sometimes doing that deep breathing can make you feel dizzy again. If that's the case, just go back to pulling down a few times till you feel relaxed. Okay, so the, um, the next exercise we're going to do is just a, a kidney exercise. And I'll tell you the reason for why whilst we're doing it. So just let the hands come into the prayer position in front of your heart. And then gently just... Carve your hands back along your ribs until the middle finger just touches the rib, the lowest rib at the side of the body. And then take your thumb to the back and just see if you can make your thumb connect with the, the rib at the back on the bottom and the first lowest rib on the front with your first finger. So we have this kind of gentle hold on our ribs. And then we're just going to move the tailbone. So the tailbone swings forward and it lifts up as well. Almost imagine curling it up so it could touch you on the forehead. And then we do the reverse of that. We take it backwards and lift it up and almost, almost imagine it could tap you on the back of the head, on the nape of the neck. So swing forwards and then lift up. Swing backwards and then lift up. So it's not just swing forwards. It's swing forward and up. Swing back and up. Forwards and lift. Backwards and lift. Forwards and lift, backwards, lift. One more, forward, lift, 
backwards, lift. Okay, so the next part of this exercise is to do a circle with the hips. So we're going to do exactly as we've just done, swing forwards and lift. And then while it's lifted, try and move over to the right hand side. Try and lift up at the back as we did before and try and keep it lifted as you move to the left hand side. Lift at the front, go right. Lift at the back, go left. Lift at the front and right. Lift at the back, go left. Okay, so just continue around, gently swirling your hips around like this. We're really trying to kind of remember to lift up as much as we can at the front, lift up as much as we can at the back. And what happens is we find that we're just moving the kind of the middle third of the body, just really focusing into this area here, squeezing in the kidneys as you go around the back. And as you go around the back, as you lift your tailbone up, you really apply pressure to squeeze the kidneys. And as you go around the front, you really open up this area here where the kidneys live. So we get this gentle massage onto the kidneys by doing this exercise. So why would it be important for us to suddenly start doing this today? Okay, so we're talking about winter time. So depending on where you are in the world, winter in the UK. Uh, if it's summertime, this is less relevant <laughs> if you're in the southern hemisphere. Um, but wintertime um, is when uh, the kidney uh, energy in our body is most kind of required. And so what happens is that um, each season, another organ is asked to do the, the kind of the main part of the work. And so at this time of year, your kidneys are the focus of the body. And the kidneys are trying their hardest to keep everything in balance to work around. And so our kidneys, um, they're the water element in Chinese medicine. And of course, we think about water uh, during winter time, it tends to freeze. And so we're keeping our kidneys warm at this time of year. We're gently massaging our kidneys to keep the water flowing, as it were. So in Chinese medicine, we associate various different emotions with the organs as well. And so the home or the emotion of the kidneys, as it were, is fear. So it's possible for us to become a bit more fearful during the winter time, fearful of everything, <laughs> fearful that we might freeze, you know, is the most basic one. But uh, beyond that, there's all sorts of other fears that come in at this time of year. Obviously Christmas, New Year, in the UK, we have to do tax returns at this time of year. That could give you a lot of fear about money. There's also fear, you know, family times, all sorts of things like that. Um, and so fear is the, the uh, thing I wanted to look at today. OK, so let's just bring this to a gentle stop. We have to go around in the opposite direction to maintain balance. So if your hands, you can just sort of loosen your hands if they're too tight. You can put them back onto the ribs again and then you can Move the tailbone forwards and lift it up at the front, rotate it towards the left hand side, lift it up at the back, rotate it towards the right hand side. Lift at the front, go left, lift at the back, go right, front lift and left, back lift and right. So really try and get that lift aspect. You don't have to go fast with this exercise, but you do want to really get into the kind of stretch of it. So that lifting up is quite crucial front and back. And we kind of imagine that it, the tailbone sort of stays lifted at the left and right as well. It's almost as if your tailbone could stay lifted the whole way around the circle. Okay, so fear. In Chinese medicine, there are sort of outward signs that a, a Chinese doctor like myself can sort of look at and see on your body and think to yourself, ha, 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 here's someone who's uh, um, uh, uh, someone whose kidney energy is a little bit lower. And so the, the, the really cruel thing about it is that um, kidney energy just gets lower and lower the older we get. It basically is the aging process. And so we have to try and keep our kidney energy as high as we can, doing an exercise just like this um, to keep the kidneys fit and well. And that keeps us young. And so... Um, yeah, we work away with this idea that if we can keep our kidneys well, we keep ourselves young. But what are the signs of aging? You know, the first thing we look at is uh, people's hair, white hair, gray hair, falling out hair, 
you know that's one of the key things and that's driven by kidney energy and so if the kidney energy is low very often people have gray or white hair um, the next thing is hearing would you believe and there's this uh, odd analogy if you think about the shape of your ears one on the left and the right and you think about the shape of your kidneys one on the left and the right they're you know they're sort of um, linked together in Chinese medicine and so if you're uh, kidney energy tends to go down, then uh, you know, your hearing is also bad. It's also, hello, doctor, I can't, you know, can you say that again? That's sort of, you know, old people's thing um, of, of the hearing starting to go. Again, that's governed by kidney energy. So if you have gray hair or if you had bad hearing, you can assume that your kidney energy is a little bit low, and this is a particularly good exercise for you. Okay, let's come to slowly to a stop. Settle in the middle. And we'll just do one or two of the forward and backward ones just to finish off. So take the tailbone forward, lift it up. Take the tailbone backward, lift it up. Forwards and lift. Backwards and lift. Forwards and lift. Backwards and lift. One more. Back and front. And then bring back to a stop. So what can you do about your kidneys? Let's just release the hands, give them a bit of a shake out. We can just gently gather chi a few more times, lifting up and pouring down, just making sure that everything goes back into the center of the body, holding the chi deep inside. So there are sort of herbal tinctures that Chinese doctors make, but you know, something very good is, um, uh, Nettle tea, just made out of fresh nettles, particularly, is lovely. But uh, also, um, just uh, you know, normal shop bought nettle tea is also very good, surprisingly good. I think the other one is dandelion and burdock, if I remember rightly. It's a very sort of British thing, dandelion and burdock, I think. But anyway, um, there are various sort of teas that are good for your kidneys. You could always just go online and search, you know, traditional Chinese medicine food or drinks for the kidneys. Surprise, unsurprisingly or surprisingly perhaps kidney beans <laughs> would you believe because they look like kidneys they're the same color as kidneys kidney beans are very good for your kidneys but there's a whole sort of you know various different things you can eat in Chinese medicine that will help your kidneys strength but doing that exercise is one of the absolute fundamentals so let's talk about fear for a moment just Settle into the standing stance. If you'd like to sit down or lie down, that's fine. But just have the knees a little bit bent, tailbone softly tucked forward, sitting down. Spine is long, chin gently tucked. Hands can be on the tummy. You could hold a ball in front of your belly. So we've done this a few times before. This is a sort of chi gathering idea. So you just lift the hands gently up to so the middle fingers level with your belly. A slightly easier version of it is just to bring the fingertips together into a tiny little ball and have that ball sitting on the tummy button. So it depends. You can try this if your back starts to get very sore. Sometimes you just have to lift the center of your chest up a little bit. So fear. <laughs> There's this new... Um, uh, shorthand that people use these days, F-O-M-O, -O, FOMO, fear of missing out, <laughs> fear of missing out on what life has to offer you. It's common though. Everybody feels that life is kind of passing them by, that sort of missing things. But also, fear sits at the bottom of everything. Because there's only one aspect of life that we can't control. And that's its matching partner, death. <laughs> and so we have this fear of death that sits at the bottom of everything. It's a little surprise that news is so prevalent in our world. We're easily kind of titillated, excited by the fear Somebody was killed, another war going on. And we listen to those and it gives us a little bit of a thrill because we're sort of looking at our own destiny through a telescope. You know, oh, that could have been me. People talk about, you know, oh, I could have been on that 
train that crashed in that car accident. I could have, you know, it could have been me. And people sort of get a little bit excited by that. This is why horror films are so <laughs> interesting to people. It's this kind of little thrill. It's controlled thrill. It's why going on a roller coaster is exciting. It's a controlled thrill. You know, in the back of your mind, you're not going to die, but it seems like you might for a moment. And that little jolt of fear that goes through your body can be exciting. It can also be exhausting because what happens is that you work into, walk into work every day and your snarling boss says there's another problem that you've created or that you have to fix. And day after day, after week after week, after year after year, the fear has exhausted your kidneys. Every single decision you make at work, something depends upon it. You know, it might even get to the stage if you're sort of working as a, an ambulance driver or something, that every moment, every decision, someone's life depends upon it. Perhaps people's lives depend upon your decisions on a slower, but even more dramatic basis. You know, whatever the job is you do, maybe you're a um, counselor, a psychologist, you know, whatever it is, you're constantly have other people's lives almost at your fingertips. And that creates a lot of stress for you. You do something wrong, something happens, and then it's your fault. You order the incorrect thing, cost the company a fortune, it's your fault. You don't call somebody back, they give the business elsewhere, it's your fault. What about when you move into your family circles? If you're looking after an aged parent, if you're looking after a young child, you have the responsibility the responsibility to make that person happy, well, safe, to make sure that they take their pills, to make sure that they uh, get home from school safely, whatever the aspect is. There are a lot of responsibilities in life. Every one of these responsibilities just adds another little squirt of cortisol into your bloodstream. Every time you think about the things you must do the things that you've committed yourself to, the people you've committed yourself to. Every time you think of that, a little injection of cortisol goes into the body. Well, think how a body would have been 300 years ago. There'd have been no news, there'd have been no excitement, there'd have been nothing going on. Just plant your crops, wait for them to grow. Perhaps there's a lot of fear around that. If you know suddenly a, a, a flock of locusts turn up and eat all your crops, yeah, you'd probably, you know, I don't know, collapse. Um, you'd probably be very fearful for your life. But those are sort of once or twice in a generation <laughs> problems that people would fear, you know, have fear from. Not every single day. And basically, they say that you can survive one big blow in your life. So if your father dies and it really hits you, you can generally come back from that, you know, over a year or two. Things mellow down and life gets back to normal and you, you're left feeling sad, but, you know, it's not damaged you incredibly. But if you have two blows in a row, that's where things start to spiral out of shape. So perhaps your father dies and then you lose your job. Perhaps your father dies, then your mother dies. Perhaps, you know, so we're talking about two life events, one close to the other. Your mother dies, then you get divorced. You know, whatever the case may be. These really sort of difficult things, and people always make these lists of the most difficult things in, in life. They sort of say, you know, death of a loved one, uh, then, you know, moving house, getting married, you know, whatever these things are, you know, there's about four or five things that people see as being their life events, which can be extraordinarily stressful. 
So stress of one thing you can generally surmount. Stress of two things piled on top of each other, and that's where things start to go badly wrong for the body. So now we're talking about constant, constant flow of cortisol, other hormones which are sort of seen as being, it's not right to say that they're negative hormones, because they all have a use. But uh, for, uh, for instance, you know, you couldn't escape a tiger if you didn't have an injection of cortisol into your bloodstream. You know, it has to, and adrenaline, of course. You know, that's how we get ourselves rushing, running from something. And uh, we need that. But if there are no tigers in your home or your office, <laughs> then this constant injection of adrenaline and cortisol into the bloodstream is not good. There's another one which escapes me. ED, no, no I've gone and lost it. Anyway, so your brain can't tell the difference between someone shouting at you, oh, for God's sakes, you should have done that, you know, and uh, a tiger. It's so still the same stress to your body. My colleague John always talks about uh, a deer when you surprise a deer and it goes bolting off, wow, you know, it goes running off into the woods. And then when it's safe, it stops and it shivers for a bit and the adrenaline goes out of its system and then it gets back to eating some grass. You know, very nice. The point is that when that deer goes running away, it then doesn't go home and talk to its partner about all the problems it's had during the day. It doesn't go on social media and read about other people's problems. It doesn't then watch the news and feel even worse about its own problems. You know, this is where we've gone wrong. We don't just let go of our issues, we just mull them over and mulch them through. And so fear can create a lot of chronic illness in our body. So what's the story? How do you deal with fear? Well, the first thing is strengthen your kidneys. I know it sounds ridiculous, but the more kidney energy you have, the better you feel about life, the stronger you feel about your life. So there's a very physical thing that can be done there. You can really exercise your kidneys and exercise your body. and You'll find that already you're feeling better about how you face life. So you have the first layer, which is just do some simple exercises. But then we have to also start asking ourselves questions about the social constructs of our life. What is going to happen if you say to that boss, no? What's going to happen if you say, I can't do this, I need help? What's going to happen if you decide, okay, let's look at the sort of the, the life-changing things. If you decide, you don't want to get married. You don't still want to be married. You just think to yourself, oh, this has been causing me so much stress. Okay, so to say, decide to divorce tomorrow. Ah, terrible. What's going to happen? But that's the question is, what's going to happen? What is actually going to happen? Are you going to die? Well, no. Is the other person going to die? No. <laughs> So there we have the sort of, you know, the bottom line, which is, am I going to die? That's the main fear. Okay, so then, you know, we might think to ourselves, but if I die, if I, if I divorce, you know, what will happen? Where will I live? Who will I be? What will happen to me? How will I read? You know, all of these questions. But the bottom line is that, you know, we have so many layers of safety valves in our life. We have family. We have, you know, social services. We have all sorts of things that can help us. And so the ultimate, it's not just like sort of, you know, cutting a string and you fall down a pit into the, into the sort of depths of doom. It's never quite like that. Sometimes it feels like that, but it's never quite like that. So what is the, the it was interesting, I was um, listening to one of my Chinese teachers and he was just sort of saying about a, um, uh, a couple who still lived with their, um, with one of the, you know, sort of grand sets of parents. And, uh, he was just sort of saying to them, just leave, just go and travel, just go away and fight. And, you know, basically the stress that involved with being in that family setting, he said, if you can't leave it, 
just be out of the family setting as often as you can. Go away every weekend, you know, travel around the world, take a month off and go traveling. Just be away from the environment. And that's just it. You know, it's about looking at ways that we can um, change the narrative for ourselves. So we get so set into our social norms. And then there's another layer of questioning. If I divorce, what will people say about me? What will people think? Will I always be on my own for the rest of my life? Okay, so the other sort of aspect of that is like, you know, when someone dies, how will I ever survive? How will I ever carry on? In the short term, things always look bleak. In the long term, we get through them. So think about a challenge in your life, you know, a few years ago, a time when you lost a job, a time when somebody died, a time when, you know, just think back about that. And just look at yourself now and you think, okay, well, you know, I did survive. It didn't end up breaking me. We have this incredible capacity to forgive, to forget, to move past, to rebuild. We're such amazing beings. So fear, it goes back to this, that old acronym that we've seen and heard all over the new age. Fear stands for false evidence appears real. False evidence, you can make a lot of false evidence in your life. You can say, well, if I leave this person, then this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. And that's all in your imagination. None of it's actually true. It's just things you've thought up that might happen, false evidence, and it seems very real to you. But until you step forwards and break through that wall, move through the mirage, then it will appear real. So twice in my life, I've stepped off a cliff, not knowing where I would land. Not literally, of course. Uh, working in the city, I could not imagine what would happen to me after I left that job. But I couldn't stay in that job a minute longer. And so that was it. One morning I just said, I'm leaving. And a weight lifted from my shoulders. And at the same, at the same time, the boss said, you can't leave. I'll pay you money to stay for another six months. I said, yeah, lovely. So I got an extra amount of money. I had six relaxing months where I didn't care about anything. And then I was able to leave the job. And by the time I left the job, a new one had already appeared. Just trusting the universe that things will be right. I left London to move to Bath. I had no idea what was down here. I just said, right, here we go. Let's go. And we went. And that was it. And here, I'm happy deeply happy. Everything opened up for me when I did that. So things that seem like a dead end, the second you face them, they change. Face your fears now. Be brave. Break through. False constructs can be broken with ease. Another level of fear is the information we get. We can be given very fearful information by doctors. Doctors work at a very basic physical level. They just think that a chemical can fix everything or a, an operation can fix everything. But unfortunately, they're working at a very, very basic level. Hey, they get very good at it, don't get me wrong. They spend, you know, five, seven years becoming experts in their field. And then, you know, uh, how to cut something off or how to cut something out or how to um, apply more chemicals to make something change. Very good, you know, it's, but it's not anywhere close to where we're working with Qigong. Qigong, of course, works on the body. There's no question about that. But also, Qigong works with the mind. Qigong works with the emotions, 
Qigong works with the energy of the entire universe. The energy of the entire universe. I bet your doctors would wish they could do that. Or I wish your doctors wished they could do it. <laughs> anyway, maybe one day, who knows. And so what we're talking about is the patterns inside that keep you fearful. They are apparently enormous great chains, the enormous chains you see holding vast ships to the dockside. But those chains are just illusory. You can cut through them with a butter knife, it turns out. They look solid. They look like you'll never be able to change or move. And then when you do it, you think, oh, wow, that was easy. So we have to allow our emotional selves to cut free from the old stories. So what is the story that binds you in place? What came to mind the second I asked that question? Okay, so sometimes when we think about our relationship to something else, it can seem very powerful, very real, very strong, very permanent. And also, sometimes it can seem like something you don't want to break. It still makes you feel unhappy. But it has value of some sort. What can we do in those cases? We could change the way our relationship is. We could change the nature of that relationship. So I want to be in this job. I think it's an amazing job, but everything about it's wrong. Okay, so change everything about it then. I want to be in this relationship with this person, but they've got such problems, you know, fine. Let's see if we can change those problems. And so here we are with these ideas that we can actually change the world around us, change the way we respond to the world. So you think about you and your partner. Dissolve all the problems between the two of you. Bring back healthy healing energy between you. Think about the problems between you and your boss. Think about the problems between you and your family. Just let them dissolve and bring back perfect working relationships. The things that scare you, let them dissolve. Bring back a healthy relationship to that thing. It's a gentle movement of the hands while we're doing this exercise. We can just waft our hands apart, imagining problems dissolving, chains breaking. And we bring our hands together, we just feel everything healed. So this is Lachi, simple Lachi exercise. You may have been doing it already naturally, your body might just have fallen into the rhythm of it. If you've ever been into this class, you've no doubt seen La Chi before. And it's this gentle idea that as we move our hands apart, we can dissolve whatever it is we're thinking about, and we can bring back a perfect healing in its place. So how would you uh, dissolve money issues? Or you just see everything going, all the bills going, all the problems going, and in its place, you just see a perfect working bank account, a perfect working life. You can dissolve a relationship with your brother or sister. You can bring back happiness into its place. You can dissolve a, a problem with a parent who's passed away, you never managed to get over. Dissolve one of those problems and bring back happiness and joy in its place. You don't have to be specific. You don't have to be absolutely spot on with what you bring back. Bringing back happiness is enough. Bringing back health is enough. So you can just see a problem between you and a doctor. You could just let all of that problem dissolve away and then bring back a perfect relationship between you and the doctor, as it were, with all the information good. So whatever it is you want to do, just work gently with your hands. Let those problems gently break up and dissolve back out into the universe. Those patterns have gone. And then when we bring back, we bring back this ultimate healing inside. Let go of all the fear in your body and bring back wisdom deep inside, knowledge. You have the knowledge inside.
to know how to deal with these problems. You let go at the deepest level, everything dissolves. You bring back this incredible healing chi inside. Gently allow that to work, flowing open, drawing chi home to your body. Let the issues dissolve, let the solutions pour in. Dissolving old problems, bringing back vast quantities of healing energy. Let go, let go, let go. Draw chi back to heal your life. When we let go, we let go at such a deep level that the old patterns dissolve. When we bring back, we can bring back and heal at a totally fundamental level in the body deep inside, release, relax and open, draw back and heal, gently opening, energy flows inside to heal your life, be very specific, get down into a specific joint or organ that has problems and then pour the energy directly inside that, so we can Go from the sort of the micro to the macro. What is it that needs healing in your life? Do it now. Let go at a cellular level. Let go at a DNA level, an atomic level. Bring back vast healing energy from the universe. You're so tiny. The universe is so vast. Your problem is just a speck of dust in the universe. Let it go and float out to the four corners of the universe and then bring back some healing energy to replace it. Fill your body with this wonderful healing energy. Just think about your problem scattered, shattered like a mirror that's broken, million pieces out into the universe. Your problem is gone and then you bring back some vast energy to heal that space that's left. Shatter these problems, break them into a million pieces, tiny, drifting out into the back of the universe, and then drawing in amazing healing chi, fresh into the body, take its place. So we're just letting go of fear at the deepest level. You are the universe. And bringing back incredible resources into your life. Even death, no more fear, because you are the universe. Just let that fear dissolve. You will always be the universe. You are the vastness of everything. Bring back into this body. So this body might have its you know, limited time, but that doesn't matter because you, you continue forever. So feel the vastness of you out in the universe. And then bring back healing into this body. Let this body have a fantastic time for as long as it can. Let it feel well, healthy and happy. And just know that when it comes to the end of its time, you continue on into the vastness you will always be. So draw energy back to heal this body and keep it going well. This incredible vessel that we travel in, let's make it work beautifully. This incredible life, just get rid of all of the problems and then bring back all the resources you need to fill this incredible life that you are playing. Have the greatest time in this life. Enjoy this life to its fullest. Why not? Why not really experience this life? Let go of the chains that have bound you. Let go, let go and open. And then when you bring back, bring back vast new experiences into your life. Open up to new potential, new healing. Just a couple more times. Really feel you can dissolve at the greatest, deepest level of you. All of the social structure of you, all of the emotional structure of you, all of the old stories, gone. Bring back a brand new version of you, a whole new blueprint for your life. Draw it in deep inside and allow it to populate every cell every piece of DNA, every atom of you, 
filled with these new ideas, new ideals, open up once more to become the entirety of the universe, the vastness of everything. Just pause for a moment, totally open, out in the universe, every cell vibrating with the cell of the universe, with the Hunyuan Chi of the universe, you as one with everything. And rather regretfully almost, rather sadly, we have to come back into this little body, <laughs> bring back all the vast entirety, the beauty of the entire universe, and pour it back into your body. Oh, it's so small. <laughs> Never mind. We'll just make the very best of it. We'll really enjoy it while we have it. So really just fill your body with absolute joy, with love. Let's feel that love one more time. When we open up, our body just becomes one with everything around us, out open in the entirety of the universe. This Hunyuan Chi is love, unconditional love, the vastness of our universe, unconditional love. Draw that back into your life now. As you bring your hands back towards the body, just fill the whole body with unconditional love. Fill your whole life with unconditional love. Everything, everywhere. Allow it to change and be unconditional love. Can we just gently draw our hands back onto the belly? Feel your body now. Feel your body filled, zinging, fresh everything working well. Feel your connections out into life changed. Feel that the magic you have created here today is able to change your relationship to everything around you. Just listen with new ears today. Expect things to be different. Expect things to gently change because you have created that agent for change in your life. Allow it to happen. Don't be fearful. Run with it. When the opportunities open, try them. Take them. Allow things to shift and move. Very good. So let's just close down using the Zheneng Qigong method to close down. So we just bring our hands up into the prayer position in front of the heart. We can just step our feet together and bring them into the standing posture. You can do the sitting or standing. Take the hands up in front, raise them up over the crown of the head, up into the blue sky. Open up little fingers, ring fingers, middle fingers, split the hands apart, allow them come down to shoulder height. Scoop two lovely handfuls of chi, bring them round to the front, and just send this energy deep inside your brain. Illuminate your brain, every cell in your brain, working well. Total clarity in your brain. Drift the elbows down, let the hands come underneath the armpits, just lightly touch on the side of the body and send chi into the middle of your chest. Middle Dantian energy field sends chi into your organs. So we, today we fill up our lungs and our heart, we fill up our spleen and pancreas, our liver, but most importantly, send chi deep inside your kidneys. Keep you brave and strong. Fill your kidneys with chi. So you get through this winter period with no problem at all. And then we just drift our hands back behind us. We point them to the horizon behind. And then the back of the hands start to move towards the front of the body. When they're in line with the side of the body, just turn them over. Now we have this lovely big ball of chi. Send some out into the universe and then draw some back for yourself. Draw the hands. Traditionally, it would be left hand first for guys, right hand first for ladies. But really, it's whatever suits you these days. And then draw the hands as if you're squeezing this ball of chi deep into the belly, holding the chi deep inside. This vast energy, this vast reservoir of chi inside your body. Imagine you can sweep it up your spine, up into your brain. Imagine you can fill your neck and shoulders and have it pour down your arms to your fingertips. Imagine the whole spine illuminated with chi. Your ribs into the upper chest, into the middle of the body, into the lower 
uh, part of the torso, then move down into the spine, down to the tailbone, down to the hips and the pelvis, into the hip joints, into the thighs, into the knee joints, into the calves, down to the ankles, into the Achilles tendon, and then into the feet. So the whole of the body filled with this fresh chi. Every cell in the body functions perfectly. So you've reminded each cell what it is you want from it, the new blueprint of your life. You've reminded each cell how to function properly. Every cell returns to perfect working order. The problems start to clear. The illnesses disappear. Your body starts to function really well. So we set the image in motion. Sometimes it takes a little while for the body to respond, but we know that if we do it every day, eventually the body catches up too. Every day you work with these ideas and you take one gentle step forward. It might be a journey of a thousand steps, but it begins with one step. Every day, getting better. Every day, body improving. Every day, emotions balancing. Every day, spiritual connection getting stronger. Every day, life changing around you to be better. Lovely. Okay, let's turn circles round the belly. Three circles anticlockwise. And this just allows any excess chi to gather deep here in this core energy field. And then three circles the opposite direction. And that just sends a message to the body. Oh, we have to go back out into daily life. Let's resettle the energy fields. Let's prepare ourselves for the onslaught of life. And then you can just bring the hands back onto the belly. As you stand here, imagine your Wei Chi layer, an energy field around the body protecting you, keeping you safe. So there's you deep inside your Wei Chi layer, happy, healthy, everything working well. Every function of the body returning to perfect working order. And then we imagine our beautiful Chi body around us. It's like a sort of meter in front, meter behind, left, right, up, down. So you're encapsulating this beautiful Chi body. Protects you, but it also connects you to the outside world. So feel protected and connected, happy and healthy. Big smile on your face. Slowly open your eyes. Let the hands drift down beside. Let's move the fingers, move the toes a bit. Perhaps you can have a little stretch out if you wish. And then we can say how loud together. So if you'd like to unmute yourselves. We raise our hands in the air. I count one, two, and then we shout how la. Ah, hands up. One, two, ha, la, la. One, two, ha, la. One, two, ha, la. Lovely, thank you very much. You take the right hand and sort of scoop it up, left hand on top, pull the fingers together, and then have the thumb, one on top, one on the bottom. Thank you very much. Really good to see you guys. <sighs> Have a lovely day. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.